Hi, Jason. So, folks, this is the DevMetrics Working Group for um, June 6. And uh, what we do here is we go through the persistent links first and then uh, go over the hypotheses and then the agenda items. Um, with that, uh, I will get started with the persistent links. So, average MRs per month. Let me share my screen. Second. Okay. So we are at the 6th of June, and um, uh, average amounts per month of month trust. We anticipated a drop here because of contribute. Um, but still, we're doing better than the months that we did not have contribute before, uh, including community contributions. I think we're doing uh, relatively OK. Christopher, do you have anything to add here um, in terms of predictions? Uh, yeah, generally, I don't try to predict on the first week because it's always a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a, um, I'm trying to think what the best way is to describe it is. It's a little bit of an unknown. Sure. Uh, because you have new new personnel and those kinds of things. What I was curious about was is uh, since this is the first week and it maps to roughly the eighth, um, you know, with eighth freeze, how close we are to uh, how close we are to uh, so in April uh, we had five hundred twenty eight in that very first week, and right now we're trending at four thirty four with uh, effectively a day and a half to go. So we're actually looking like we. We may crest over it, maybe. Let's see, four days, about 100, 100 hours a day, so we might get to 630, uh, which is pretty impressive if, if we uh, uh, beat our, our largest week uh, in the past two months. OK. Uh, do Is it still the goal to reach 10 by? A, a yes, that's, that's the, if you, you know, the increased productivity by 20%. Yeah. That's effectively yeah. what is defined as the goal. If we hit that mark, then we can just turn it into a KPI that we just monitor and manage associated with it. So, um, so that's going to be that. That one's going to play a little bit because uh, uh, you're starting. Okay, you're starting with average MRs per month. So yeah. So you know, like to get to that, I think we have to be roughly at six about mid month. So okay. us being at three right now is feeling pretty good uh, from that perspective. Okay, sounds good. Uh, remarks from anyone else? We good. OK, I'm moving on to the next persistent link. Monthly Merge MRs. And the timestamp is correct. This was just imported. OK, we're, so May uh, was at, it's actually pretty impressive considering that we had contributed in May uh, 1,347. Uh, rolling average looks good. We are at, uh, yeah. At, Oh, okay. The number you, you mentioned was was um, by this one. Got it. Correct. Yeah, and I apologize for that. I was looking at the wrong graph because they have the same form. It's hard for me to sometimes <laughs> without looking at the left side. So yeah, in this particular case, uh, this is a good example where uh, if you go down to the including community contributions, uh, this is you know we're sitting at four forty, so it's feeling pretty good uh, for you know the first week. First week is always our largest uh, week, and then we. Um, decline uh, for the next two weeks, and then we like usually the fourth week of the month is also a busy time. Got it. Okay. Cool. Uh, I think we covered the, our basis here already. I'm I'm touching on the next one. So before we were updating this uh, spreadsheet, um, the big update this week is we now have a, a work in progress chart um, by Mark Fletcher that automates the averages uh, P85 P95 time to close of S1 S2s. Uh, we're currently verifying that this is um, uh, close to the spreadsheet. Uh, and then the, the, the dark trend lines here are the, uh, I think, total number of bugs closed. Uh, we may turn this into a bar chart and keep the trend lines as an average as the next next iteration. But uh, within the end of this week, I would uh, uh, close this out and call it automated. And we would just monitor the, this chart going forward instead of pulling data from, from here and there. Uh, so great work by Mark and, and the team. Mark is not here, uh, but uh, Remy can, can step in. Oh, hi, Lyle. Perfect. You are here. Yeah, sorry for being late. I 
was in a sales enablement and then I was in a customer call and then I realized I was supposed to be here. So here no I am. Worries. No worries. This should be right up your alley. Uh, we just automated the time to close as one as two bucks as a chart. Um, uh, the black one trend line, I'm going to repeat myself again. These are the, the numbers of um, closed bucks. So that's kind of the anti-metric here. If, if the number is low, but then they, the, the, if the numbers of days are low, but the total uh, number of bucks are low as well, it means that we don't have the, the complete picture yet. Uh, and then uh, these are just a mirror of the spreadsheet that being, we presented earlier on last, last, last month or so. So really boring solution. We don't have filtering um, on labels here, so we just add multiple charts. So the top one is, it covers all bases. This is S1, S2, and this is uh, uh, with the customer label. And I, I think there's some hygiene here. Um, uh, I, don't think, I don't think this is a complete picture of bug, S1 bugs with customers. Um, I won't call it out yet. Uh, it looks really shoppy, um, uh, and there should be more of this. However, with, with S2, I think the, the population is, looks a bit uh, more complete, and um, uh, you can, we can dive in this way. It's still, uh, the, the P95s are, I wouldn't call it getting better. I don't, uh, there's one that's like 488 days. My hypothesis is that we are closing out, we are surfacing old bugs now, and we're closing them out. So. Before we see improvements, we will still need to clean out the backlog of age before it starts to, to dip down. Um, I think we should keep on monitoring this to make sure it doesn't spike if it's, if it's um, stable. Um, uh, we're at least making progress here. Uh, questions, discussions. Uh, this is still in a review app in Insights, and uh, I think we're looking to merge this sometime at the end of this week. Do we have the total, total bugs outstanding, or total bugs open charted? Total box chart. Um, did we cover that in the agenda? Uh, I think we covered it before. Um, there's an issue for it, but we haven't prioritized that to automate yet. Uh, this is, we can look at it in the issue tracker pretty easily. Um, do you see that as a, an immediate need coming in? I don't see it as an immediate need. It's just kind of, it's interesting because like would, um, it'd be supporting data to the hypothesis that we're cleaning stuff out and consequently if, uh, if, if you would see, you expect the bug trend to be declining or at least uh, stabilizing rather than saying bug. Right, right. Um, Remy, I think, I think we have this, right? But though it's not in a very digestible form right now, correct? The, the total number of open bugs? Um, do you mean in, in, in this dashboard? Yeah, in this dashboard. Um, yeah, I think we have. Yeah, so it'd be open bugs in a given month. So it'd be, you know, like you start the month and what's the number of open bugs associated with that month? Oh, yeah, I, I think it's kind of real time. Let's see, um, bugs by... Uh, it's okay if we don't have it. I'm just, I'm just saying that that's, you know, you understand what I'm trying to get at? Yes, yes, yes. I think, I think it's this one. It was experimental. Let me call it that. Let me call it that. Uh, and it's an area chart that... Uh, Oh no! It's, it's not total. It's it's the close, the total close, and the close. This actually, this actually would give. This is a good proxy. Okay. Because uh, this will tell you in a given month how many were opened and and how many were closed. And the question is, is are we opening more? Yeah. So okay. So we are opening more. Uh, okay. Yes. By uh, whoo! What is that? That's almost like uh, almost eight hundred. You know, okay. well, well, I don't think this is scope to bugs. These are issues. We could filter this graph by bugs. Okay. And it'll be exactly what you were talking about. Yeah, we definitely do because issues could be, you know, that's, that's okay. uh, issues include our roadmap. Okay. I will, let's put this in the agenda item and then I'll, we'll take this to an issue. Uh, okay. It's probably the next iteration. Cool. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and uh, go through the hypotheses. Uh, skipping red and greens because that's completed. Uh, number seven, uh, was, was this a uh, fan out to anybody in development? Uh, was it Clement? Rachel, Rachel maintenance has dropped over time and has negatively impacted our average amounts per author. Yeah, so I actually, the link down below has a spreadsheet that shows the MR ratio. Uh, let's see here, it's the 
backend engineer to maintainer ratio versus, uh, and let me share my screen here real quick. So it's the backend engineering, uh, engineering maintainer ratio and the front end engineering maintainer ratios. And uh, what I'm seeing is, is the front end maintainer ratio is going up a little bit, but the back end largely has been stable. And uh, we still see a pretty dramatic rise in our 80, 85th. So I'm saying this doesn't correlate is kind of my assertion on this, or at least it doesn't feel like this is like a, a primary driver right now for, for MRs. It could be people are inconvenienced by it. And that's definitely, we've gotten anecdotal feedback of, you know, hey, we need more maintainers. So I think we need to keep it down. I don't think it's necessarily the reason why it's taking us longer to close uh, MRs. Okay. Uh, I, I do want to call out that there's a, a mini incident uh, this month where the red pipelines were, my master was broken for a few days and in, increasing the stability of the pipeline is also something we're working on. And I think that is probably the next correlation that we should look into, though I don't know how, what, what types of metrics we need to look at right now. Uh, definitely something in, in, in GitLab that we want to see this metric being service. Okay. So, so I'm, I'm proposing that we turn this red. Does anybody disagree uh, uh, with that? I agree with that. So no correlation, correct? That's correct. Right. Well, or, or not strong correlation. Okay. Uh, which red? Pick the right one. Is that the one? Uh, <laughs> I, know, I know we are very uh, specific about our colors. Uh, Here, I got it. I'll do it. Okay. I'll just take a that down. Uh, we don't see that strong. Um, between uh, you said FB and BE maintainers, correct? Yes. The merge requests. At, uh, I would say, call it P85. Looks good. Anything else you want to add, Christopher? Uh, not to that one. Okay. Thank you, sir. Shall we move on to number eight? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. Clement said he hasn't had time to work on this, so I think that's kind of where we're at. Um, did you add Craig Gomez to the invite? Oh, no, I did not. I had, that's all my backlog. I apologize. I'll, I'll set him next week. He's, he's expressed interest on this one. So. Okay. Uh, okay. I will make another action item on myself. I don't know. I'll do it right after this meeting. My apologies for that. Uh, should we move on? Anything else we need to cover here? So moving on to hypothesis number nine, uh, developers with less tenure at GitLab are still learning the code base compared to those who are longer tenured, uh, who are more productive. Um, where we left that, I don't think, I don't think we closed out on the action item to close number nine. Um, I know that the last meeting in discussion with Dahlia, we are prioritizing uh, automating more of the metrics to get more insights. So it's, it's natural that we didn't get any updates here. I think we need Dali to, to, um, to chime in. Um, do you know anything around here, Christopher? I don't. She hasn't given me any update on that one either. Okay. Um, Status. Okay, with that, I'm going to move on to the agenda. Um, the fourth item. Uh, so this merge request should be merged in by this week. This is the, the time to resolve S1 and S2s. Uh, I also want to call out that um, we are working with, um, uh, Dahlia is working with Emily to chart the time to merge in Periscope. Um, uh, because you've already know any progress on that. Uh, I don't have any update there, Max. Sorry. Okay, no worries. Um, let's add up to that to an item. Uh, 
part. Okay. Uh, I don't think we need any, any uh, updates here. Let's move on. Um, next one is detecting bugs past SLA. I think this is where we would need both um, Lyle and Jason uh, uh, insights and visibility here. So we, we have yet created a label um, called missed SLA label. And we're going to infer from the age of the bug and the priority. So if a bug has um, passed the age of that um, prioritization, we will add this label and then have a shard for it. Um, does that sound like a good idea? And the ask from, from us here is, uh, do we want to count when the label has been added or when the bug has been created? I think when I would say when the label gets added, I think that it's not like that's part of what makes a bug report. And if things are getting labeled correctly, like then we're not creating things correctly. But then and, that becomes invisible to your metric if that is happening. Which is maybe okay, but uh, what do you mean by invisible to the metric? So, well, if you only start measuring once the label is applied, if it's we have a consistent systemic problem with the label not getting applied for a long time, then that measurement is outside of your visibility. Okay. Okay. Um, Which maybe we don't, and so it's not a problem, but something to be considering. Okay. Uh, Remy, do do we have the capability to look at? An event and the age of that event, uh, mainly when P1 or P4, P1 through P4s have been added to a, to an issue, or do we need to build anything around there? Um, yeah, we have the we can we can uh, yeah we have the data. Um, there's event created for uh, each time a label is added or removed, so we can know that. Um, but I'm a, um, I'm a, go ahead, Remy. Sorry. Yeah, and just to add to, to what uh, Jason was saying, um, I think we are pretty good now uh, at triaging incoming issues. Like every day we triage the, the day before. Uh, I think we are almost uh, catched up. Um, so should, I, I think it's, it pro it's probably not a concern. Uh, I mean, using the Issue creating creation date or the event uh, date should be pretty uh, close anyway. Is the goal then um, because we want to? I guess what I'm getting at should we just use the due date field for all bugs if that's what the goal is that we are mm. delivering all due date all of our bugs by the due date? Do you, do you want us to automatically set due dates? If well, I guess that's what I'm getting at. If you're essentially going to be doing that in a roundabout way by labels, why not? Right, right. Them? I think that's a great idea. The uh, yeah. the yeah. label is nice, but I think that the due date helps. Like it, it shows quickly like how much the SLA has passed. Uh, and and it has features built into the product that raise the red thing. I agree. It may be incredibly annoying if we have hundreds or thousands of bugs that are all now sending emails like all the time that they're past due, but I guess that's the goal. Yes. I, I, I think we need both. I don't think we can, we can simply chart with due dates because uh, we, we need flags in the system to, to dissect the dimensions. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think this, it's a both end. Yeah, I think it's both end. Christopher, you have something? Yeah, I, I guess what I'm struggling with this is why we're even, why don't we just, uh, pick what we think are the SLA amounts and then just base it on the creation date and not even do labeling uh, based on missed SLA. What, what's the... My concern would be like if we're in, that we're holding people accountable for something that hasn't been fully formed, where it's like, we're going to ping you because you missed the SLA on this thing that you didn't even know about because it was like labeled incorrectly. Yeah. That's how you find systemic incorrectly labeling issues problems. So maybe it's okay. Um, um, it's, it'll be as a company succeed, or I don't know how we're gonna be holding people accountable to these things, but the- Let's call it an SLA. 
company metric than a person metric, yeah. Let's call it an SLO. It's an objective, right? So an SLA is an agreement that says, uh, says uh, and I'm, I'm being a little bit fast and loose with SRE books, so if you read Google's true definitions, this is not really intent. But uh, SLAs is a, a contractual agreement that says, you know, people are, are falling down on the job. Objectives are, are things that say, this is where we're aspiring to, and then, then we can start looking at the data. And I'd rather keep it away from either labels or uh, due dates, because one, due dates change, full stop, people will just keep pushing out the due date on it, and then it'll look like, okay, well, you know, I haven't, I haven't met the SLA because I just keep pushing the due date out, which isn't meeting the SLA. <laughs> um, and then the other part is, is I bet there's a ton of bugs that we don't even bother putting in the due date in, so then you get oh. out, right? Yeah, that, that's why. And uh, and there's some that intentionally sit out there for six months waiting to see if anybody else runs into the problem, and that's intentional. Um, so yeah. SLA is not really the right term where we're saying we're going to fix or close every bug within one month or whatever. That's By the way, it's technically not. <laughs> it's it's a combination of uh, engineering and product management. SLO. It's to, to be very clear on that point. Like uh, you know, if if this gets prioritized below the line, um, whether we hit the SLO or not is uh, definitely going to be an individual individual product manager's prioritization. Yeah. Should we should we remove the like, if we're gonna switch to SLO? Should we just stop using the term SLA because we know we're not gonna make it? It's not that we're not gonna make it. Objectives can be made. It's just that uh, we haven't we haven't we're not set up. It's it's we're not set up in the position where we're we're saying that we're uh, fully supported of this. Guaranteed. It's not. And also, we don't have contracts with our customers saying that we have agreed to right these types of issues. Yeah. We, if if Annette. Yeah. If an SLO is met on a consistent basis and a team says, I want to make turn this into an SLA, it's totally fine for them to do that and say our team supports us. And then they can say, we're going to, you know, we're going to push back on certain things because we're going to keep continuing to meet this SLA mm -hmm. but until, until when we see demonstrated ability to, build, to, to actually meet that objective. And then also uh, agreement that that objective should be a, a contractual agreement or a team performance agreement. And that's kind of my view of it. Okay. You always start out with indicators. You always start out with indicators, then O's, then A's. And A's. A's are always last, and they're the smallest subset, guaranteed. Like if, if you have if you have more A's than O's, you don't have you probably don't have really a, a functioning uh, system, in my opinion. Yeah. It's like the pyramid, right? Like the yeah. pyramid needs to be more than the top, and the top is the A's, and then the O's, and whatever granular uh, yeah. stuff they fall down. So okay, to to close this this item out. I thought I think we agreed to count the days when the prioritization has been added by product, right? So we, we can't really add a new date from when a bug gets created. I can guarantee a bunch of things will miss SLOs already because like, hey, I just saw this bug two weeks from now and it's obviously a P1. Um, I added P1 and we have only 15 days left that's already passed, like feature freeze and stuff. So I, I think we need to count from when the prioritization label has been added. And then, uh, and then come from there. So that's, are we all in agreement with that? I agree. Can I add in a wacky idea? Can we, in a future iteration, uh, track the amount of time it takes between issue creation and the time a priority label gets added and make that an objective? I like your idea, Lyle. Um, and to support the original idea, I like that as well. Um, I would say actually even be the be more specific. It's the last uh, prior prioritization Because um, <laughs> otherwise uh, like um, You don't want to yeah. measure one for you know multiple like if, if it's, it's just whatever the last prioritization is is, is how we'll evaluate that bug. Does that make sense? Yeah, that the last the last event that had the prioritization added. Yeah, uh, and it, 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 with those, right? Like if it was it created as a P4 and sat there for a year and then upgraded suddenly to a P1. And then that's um, 30 days after that. After that we should have done, yeah, a year ago. Yep. Perfect. Thank you, Jason. Sorry for I think I may have interrupted you a little bit there. Um, okay. I think that makes sense. Uh, to your answer, I think in my engineering metrics uh, document, I did propose time to first triage. I think that's probably where we want to massage it and put it time to prioritization added and that's when that's what the, the measurement would be okay. 
Um, so first triage is already done by quality. Uh, we are looking at three issues per one test automation engineer every day, three to four issues. And I think we're, we can happily guarantee the response time there, though I don't have any promised SLA around that yet. Uh, I will be. But then let's turn this metric into time to, time to, pri time to prioritize bugs. Um, and then let's measure it there. Moving on to the next one, uh, we lost some data on fulfillment because the label fulfillment was accidentally deleted. Um, Mark is currently working with, um, uh, I, forgot, I forgot the engineer's name, but we are working on restoring this, this label back to the issues and MRs. Uh, I do want to underscore the need that um, before, with the new labels and migrating things, please tell your, your teams, uh, organizations, please do not delete them. Um, we should deprecate them and keep the data around. And only after we have ensured that those labels are carried over correctly and our metrics are correct and dashboards are, are changed to reflect them, only then we can deprecate them. And, and I wouldn't even say we should delete them. Um, any, any thoughts, questions around this? Is there a feature to basically lock labels? I did raise this. Like you need like a, a protected label and archive label feature. Uh, Jason, do you have any idea around that? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I was doing something else for a moment. Uh, can you repeat the question? Do, do we plan to have a feature to lock down labels or archive them or protect them? The, that was just being discussed a day ago. Let me do a quick bit of research and we'll get back to you on that. I think so is the answer yes, but I don't know if it's been scheduled. Yeah, if you have an issue on it, Jason, that, that's probably what we're looking for, or else a timeline. <laughs> Add that for, for Jason to follow up. Uh, would you like it to do in this document, Jason? How's, how's best to track? I'm almost done, uh, one sec. Okay, awesome, thank you so much. Uh, I'm moving on to the next one. So try- uh, uh, it's, not, it's not scheduled, sorry to interrupt, Matt, before we move on, but uh, I found the issue and it's not scheduled, but it's something that we can advocate for. It looks like it's plan team, so it would be Eric. Okay, awesome. I'm very happy we have a uh, product lead in this meeting, um, so thank you. Okay, moving on to the next one. Um, I'm gonna share my screen. So in, in, in anticipation for the labels moving around, um, I did circle this um, or socialize this early on already, but doing it here again. So we've added the stage views um, for the DevOps stages, and it'll be grouped into the director level view for, for development um, going on. But essentially as the, the labels are being moved over, we will slowly deprecate these and do it team by team. Um, the reason we want to do this is to make sure that the labels transfer over correctly. Mark is currently working on adding a subcategory for groups, so knowledge, um, uh, editor, source code control, or whatever. That will come later. We do want to get metrics correct at this level first, then add the, sub, the subcategories there. Um, and, and then uh, uh, and we will go one by one. Um, when, when it's done, we will slowly remove um, the, the old team views and we, we start calling it teams and this should be essentially uh, stage group views. Um, questions? So it's not that the, like if I click on fulfillment, uh, it's not that fulfillment will go away, it'll just be in the stage view that you'll see fulfillment, is that correct? Correct, like fulfillment will be here, DevOps fulfillment. Right, okay, cool. And then you're also adding a uh, section label, section? Summarization? Yes, that, that's gonna come later. Uh, we wanna get the top okay. level right first and then um, socialize with the directors and the EMs whether the metric to collect and then uh, we'll, we'll EOL uh, the top one. Okay, cool. Uh, is, is fulfillment a stage? It is, correct? So we, did we miss adding this here? Fulfillment is a stage. It, uh, I'm sorry, sorry, fulfillment is a group. Ah. Uh, <laughs> and it, it just moved to growth. Right? And it just moved to growth. <laughs> yeah, okay. So to answer your question, fulfillment will be under growth as a section. Growth so, is a section. Oh. Fulfillment. Growth is a section, yes. So we want to be uh, a group under that section. Correct. Thank you. 
Did I get that right, uh, Jason? <sighs> All right. Uh, along the same veins, um, there's a rollout plan uh, that I outlined. So this is where this is my control panel. I just keep refreshing when when the labels are created and things get moved over. We will deprecate them similar to how we, we did um, uh, for framework uh, before. Uh, we would just add, or, or CICD. If you go to the CICD label, there's a big word called deprecated, and, and at the prefixing the label, we'll do the same here. And we will slowly transition over, and this is, um, this is the control panel that we um, are monitoring for now. So uh, if you're curious about the latest status, just go to this issue and, and just refresh it. You should get the, the latest status. Um, and these are the mappings. I feel like we need this data encoded in like the one of the YAML files in the doesn't <laughs> get left common project. Um, this mapping is, seems to always be changing now, and um, it's really hard to keep up on it. Um, and I imagine it's only much harder for for you all because you have to interact with it so much. Um, but this seems to always be changing and hard to figure out. And there's a lot of places like on the website where this stuff is hard coded rather than being generated from some. Data and if that data existed somewhere, then you could also operate off of that same data. Yep, I, I agree. Uh, like a YAM, like a single master YAML that has like nested parent structure, and then you can just yeah, or maybe adding like something to the stage .yaml and the categories .yaml. That's like, what is the label for this stage? What is the label for this category? Maybe that would be the easiest way to do it. Okay. Uh, is there anybody in this working group can, that can take the initial discussion up? Um, Is that maybe I'm confused. Is that not stages.yaml? Like, or is it? it is, I think that would be a great place to put it, but there's no label field in the right. stages. Okay. Let me write this down. Um, Goes down. Okay. Uh, let me get this right. Um, this is actually wow. And then, thanks for your patience. While I write this down, is okay. Uh, anyone here would like to volunteer taking this up? Okay, I'll 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 create an issue to discuss this then. Uh, we should extend this. Uh, I may be able to find some time to work on it, but I can't promise it right now. Okay, but I mean the I think this. I'm about another hour today. Okay, I think <laughs> the idea. Is, if you just volunteer, is that a? <laughs> no, no, no. I was saying me too. I like. <laughs> The will is there, but the, exactly. the calendar's not. Create an issue, Mac, and then we'll, let's... I will, I will create an issue. I volunteer to create an issue. I don't, do not volunteer to create an issue. <laughs> so um, around this, uh, it, but beyond that, um, uh, is this one worthy of, uh, of a weekend review? Uh, the transition of labels and the charting? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, and I still owe um, uh, you and Eric Johnson and MR to make sure that if you change any labels, please let uh, the engineering productivity team know because it will affect our metrics. Uh, right. Okay, <clears throat> now moving on. Um, uh, I think we talked about this already, um, that issues by state, we need to filter by bug, so uh, we should uh, move on. Um, and then please add Craig Owens to the invite. So I, I will send in the recording and apologize to him. I, I was out sick yesterday and um, <clears throat> I'm still feeling under the weather. I'll, I'll send in the recording, uh, point him to this agenda and add him to the, the next um, the next time around. So my apologies. Uh, Jason, you have the next one? And let me stop sharing because we passed that point. Yeah, um, so one thing that I've been seeing a trend of is, um, or at least what I can see on my team is more misdeliverable items, like more items missing. Uh, and then kind of like a product of that, um, I see more items that have like four, five, six lab misdeliverable labels on them. 
Um, so they missed like 11, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, uh, and then we'll miss 12 that out. Um, do we have a metric that can like see if there's a trend of that accumulation of single items missing like three, four, five releases? Or, and do we see a trend overall of misdeliverable issues going up? We do. We do. Uh, here, let me share the screen. And there's a bug right now. Uh, and I'll explain what that bug is. So in every team slash uh, stage group coming in, this is plotted out. And it is pulled from your stage any issues with the misdeliverable misdeliver versions. And this is why we, we wanted versions tying, tied to Mr. Liberal, so that's why we see this. Uh, there is a known bug right now where uh, we do want to double count for good intentions, but if you have an issue with Miss 11, or 10, 9, 8, 7, it's going to show in the chart for the first version. In this case, we do want to double count because if, if it's missed by many versions, it should be included in the bar chart. So when, when that bug is fixed, then you should see um, everything related to to your area uh, regarding. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, so that, that's good to know. But I think that it would be interesting to see that second um, metric as well, which is how many issues are open that have one or more misdeliverable labels, and um, like what is the you know because like, that's a signal of its own that uh, missing things month by month and delivering it the following month is a signal. Mm. Um, the things were a little too big uh, and they didn't fit, whatever. It could be a number of different things. But having something with like six of those on it is a different signal, um, or three even, um, that has been in development for a quarter and just missing milestone after milestone. Um, and there's no way to really find that now except by just kind of, there's no way to search for it in the tool. There's no, it's not here. Mm. Uh, somebody's sharing. Who's the I'm sharing because uh, I want to look for the overall one, which uh, I do think it's right to not double count them. So I think that's actually okay from that perspective. Mm. It's kind of interesting. We, in theory, two months ago, we changed to uh, 100% versus, you know, I, I would have expected to see a large number per Mr. Larvals when we were still running 70 uh, or 30% overcommit. Uh, but there seems to be a pretty dramatic rise here uh, two months ago. That's actually when we stopped doing it. I know. That's what I'm saying is it's the opposite of what I would have expected. Oh, when we when we sign up for... Yeah. When we stopped doing it, all of a sudden yeah, yeah. now we're having more Mr. Laurels, which I would have expected the opposite, right? Uh, right. Now, one thing that's in, what would be interesting about this probably is... is uh, um, going back and kind of doing some analysis on this to, to see whether or not we were actually labeling things previously as missed um, or whether it's just that we started to get actually better in the habit of that. So give me an action item. I'll uh, download the CSV and I'll do some quick, uh, I'll, I'll call it anecdotal data to try to investigate on in the next week. Okay. One thing you could show on this graph that uh, I think would, would tell the story is so for all of those items that had the missed 11.4 deliverable, how many are still open and still being worked on? Um, you could make the, you know, the, the height, uh, you, you could fill in the, the height of the, the uh, bar by a percentage of how many of those are still being worked on and not yet done. Yeah, I guess, I guess the question is, is if it's being, being constantly missed, it's clearly yeah. not getting prioritized at the top. No, uh, these are all, they're, the reason they're collecting every single one is because they're all, they've been prioritized in every single release. Like I can show you one issue that's got seven or eight of these on it. Um, and it's just, it has been prioritized as a top issue for seven or eight releases um, and just still never finished. Okay. So then uh, what you're saying is, is that uh, somebody committed to it on one release, but they realized it was three times as large potentially or four times as large as they might have expected actually what happened is it was like it was almost done at the end of every one of those months that's that does that's not how it works right <laughs> that's the story. yeah i mean that's what the story somebody may say it's almost done but it's not right <laughs> like, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like like if, if, if it was almost done at the beginning of one month and then supposedly people were working on it the next month then you would expect it to be done not yeah done again. you would expect uh, but, but uh, the point i'm making is there's no visibility into those but i can see that that's a trend that's happening more and more that things are being almost done every month, but then going three, four, in some cases, even 
half a year like that. Mm. Or it's only happening on my team, <laughs> but I, I have no real way to check. Well, I think there's, I think there's definitely a trend here where we're seeing uh, definitely a, a significant rise in missed deliverables. I don't know if it's the multiple. I think the multiple months feels like a different problem. To your point, so the question would be is, is which one would you prefer to have investigated? To start with. For me, it's the. Um, I think the. Well, yeah, I guess it's pretty tough. Both are important, but the. Well, if it's specific, somehow the one where things are going for half a year or a quarter uh, and never being finished uh, seems worse. Okay. All right. Uh, but this is just my opinion. Uh, just one person. No, that's you're you're the product manager. You're representing product management, so that's a fair. Like you get the you get to prioritize the, the investigations here. Okay, we'll we'll start with that one of the uh, multiple missing, uh, and we kind of go from there. Cool. Thanks, Jason. Okay. Multiple missing, correct? I'm, I'm updating your action item here, Christopher. Yes. I was going to stop sharing and double check on that. One way I, uh, I manually collected all the data for one release and uh, was able to show, um, like for the 11.11 release, the average item being worked on had started in 11.7 or 11.8 or something like that. Um, so that may be an interesting way to show that metric as well. Mm -hmm. Like how old is the, how many releases has the average open item direction item in this release been in? Can you, uh, can you share any analysis that you've done, Jason? Well, I can show you the, um, like the, uh, just the board for the ongoing development right now uh, for the release team, um, which will show, you can just kind of look at the items in the board and see that um, most of them have, a collection of missed. Uh, let's see. Actually, yeah, I pulled up the, I, I'm just building the, the board out now, um, but I, uh, oh, sorry, I'll paste it in the, the shared doc as well. Um, but if you take DevOps release off of this, um, you can see actually it looks like um, uh, there's, um, this seems to be very common. Uh, I just saw at the top uh, when I took this off that, um, it looks like there's lots and lots of missed. Yeah. So if you look at the. All right. Actually, I can. No. There, there's a lot here, but the, you might be able to get a count. Yeah, so um, if you look at everything that's in development on 12.0 right now, so there, uh, there's 295 open, 173 deliverables, six, uh, if you're looking at the same board as me. Um, there's 106 matches for the word missed colon, which is a higher number than I would expect as a percentage of those. It sounds like, I don't know, maybe a quarter of the items in the release have missed at least one release. If, I, if, if, if that's actually showing what I think it's showing. Well, I'm looking at the board that you sent. Uh, did you say there were like 100 something items? Yeah, if you remove the label filter. Oh, just, um, just missed? And you're oh. just looking at 12.0 everything. Ah. 
There's like 500 things there in total. I don't know what the 300 open items are that don't have the deliverable label, but that's a little bit strange to me. How did you how did you uh, get the other query to get the hundred calculation? Oh, I just searched in the browser, um, and it told me how many matches there were on the page. Yeah, though that could be one item has fifty of them, right? Uh, from that perspective, so. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. That's, I don't know that's, I don't know, that's not a. Unless you know the distribution, you don't you don't really know the how to interpret that data yet to say like. Order. That's true. Although I would say that. A hundred of a hundred is too many. Whichever interpretation you take, probably. How many issues are we doing? How many issues are we doing a, a release? I don't know. Yeah, because like we we choose velocity over predictability, right? So like uh, because of that, um, if we want to change that to for predictable over velocity, then you know that's certainly something we can discuss. But until I have like the uh, overall deliverables, it's it's hard for me to, to make an assertion of a hundreds a hundreds a lot or a little. Sure. We're doing over. We're getting close to two thousand MRs a, a month. So like, these aren't MRs either. These are issues. Right. So right. So I'm just saying by proxy. Let's say it's four to one, mm -hmm. or let's say it's ten to one. So two hundred issues. That would be a lot. But if it's four to one, five hundred issues. You know. Yeah. 20%, you know, it's the question is, is how aspirational do you want us to be? Yeah, yeah, I, I get where you're coming from. This is with the um, planning what we thought we could deliver in theory though. Yeah, as opposed to like one specific team uh, challenges, which I, I kind of recognize with the, uh, which you were kind of pointing out, which is with the re release. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, from, the, the top item here is from the uh, team. They've got one, two, three, four of those deliverables on this doc, Docker machine thing. The one right below it has two. The GitHub import results in 404 has one, two, three. It just seems strange that something like that would, would be in development for three months. Mm. But I, I don't know, like without the, like, it's just guessing based on all of the data, like you're saying, Chris, uh, it, I can't make sense of it really without some way to have an actual metric that can be broken down by team or, and try and find like the next level pattern that's going on behind it, behind this. We could definitely ask our managers to push back more on being more conservative. Well, I don't think that, that, that that's the goal. <laughs> well. <laughs> but there's somewhere in between something. No, I mean, that's, that is the goal. Like, 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 look, if, if, look, if uh, missed deliverables by definition says, I committed to it a month ago, at the beginning of the month, and I didn't hit it at the end of the month, right? So, like, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's by definition, if, uh, if, if, you know, short of their te team performance issue, like, reality is, is that that, that, would, be, that would be the intent, is just to push back at that point, right? Because that gives you visibility. Yeah, uh, I'm more talking about when there's three or four of those labels applied though all in a row. Yeah, so that's that's that that's seems the, unusual, right? That's, that's not like that, that's that's those still the solution it, for it, that is not standby. It'd be it'd still be the same issue, right? It'd be it'd be uh, I can't commit to this release, uh, but you know we could start getting getting working on it, right? Right, like that's that's an example of like it's it's this is this is clearly larger than a single release, right? Yeah. Either way, you're pushing back, <laughs> like. Uh, be because the estimation size or because uh, the, the amount of work you can get done is, is not being quantified better as well as it should be. Uh, sorry for interrupting here. No, for, sorry. It's all for, good. It's discussion. For the production, uh, for the, the product teams, do we prioritize things higher if we see that it's in missed multiple releases? Or does that get the same weight with all the other new stuff? They are prioritized higher, which is maybe what's contributing to the increasing number of um, missed deliverables showing up more and more. Because um, it's always better to finish something that's almost done, right. or at least in theory almost done, than it is to start something new. Mm -hmm. It's 
good discussion. Let me uh, see if I can get my head wrapped around it, Jason. It's probably not going to take. It's probably not something I can necessarily get answered in a week. But yeah, it's a tough, it's a tough one for sure. Then the other uh, thing that impacts is um, the value stream, like kind of like agility and how, what we choose to be able to work on. If everything ends up just because of the other nature of how things are going, that it's like three months before it's done, then the things that we pick today to work on will come out the other end in three months, even if we schedule them for this release. Christopher, would you like a marker for next week to, to come back on this point? Yeah, um, I'm using that action item as the proxy for that. OK, got it. Um, I underscore that. I think it pretty much encapsulates that as part of that. Uh, one, one thing I would say is the top level view includes so many projects. And if you filter it by just the milestone, there's test projects and like things elsewhere as well. But if, if the product team is using deliverable stretch and only the product team is using that, then, then this board is, uh, the, the middle columns are a good representation of what's there. Yeah, and just look at the release team if you want as, a, as one example, um, if you want to kind of like think about it in a, in a more uh, reasonable way to start, um, then we can just start figuring it out on one team and then, and then maybe apply whatever we figure out there more broadly. Okay, yep, agreed. Uh, I think reviewing the exit criteria is next. Anybody else want to add anything? That was a lot of agenda. Okay. Great discussions this week. Um, so I'm going to share my screen again. Be transparent about our exit criteria. So first one is a 20% increase in in uh, throughputs. Uh, I don't think we are there yet. Um, uh, we can just keep on monitoring this. Define KPIs for development organization and dashboard. Uh, I think we've made some progress here. Christopher, do you have any updates? Um, uh, any uh, new KPIs? Uh, I don't have any updates this week uh, other than I think we're getting closer, like the 10 hour Mars per engineer, I think is our, our KPI um, bookmark for that. Okay. And then I'll have to figure out what the MRs uh, for that one are. Uh, for total MRs are associated with that. So okay, sounds good. Thank you. Uh, training. This is Dahlia's, so we can skip this and wait for the update next week. Thoughts? Yeah, it's actually both mine and Dahlia's. So oh, okay. But we haven't made any progress on it. So that's fine. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, average time to resolve. Uh, I think we're almost there with the metrics. And it's kind of stabilizing. So we're making progress there, but we're not uh, down to 120 days yet. Uh, this is still an ongoing one-time triage. Uh, we haven't prioritized this yet, because we do want to get all the metrics and, and repairing the, the metrics in before that. So there's no uh, updates from me in, in this uh, criteria. Um, gather, gather, resolve TTRs, issues, and KPI in an automated fashion with the the only customer affecting defects. So this, this um, goes hand in hand with this. So this will probably be closed next week. And then we will keep on monitoring the, the time to resolve uh, going forward for that. Um, an effective iteration to the current stage, stage group triage package report. We're working on the heat map. This has been taking longer than we expected because uh, when you go down to a triage report, you scope all the issues down to just what you have. But the heat map is a higher level um, uh, scope because we, we need to look at all the issues that belongs to that stage group in CE and, and uh, all the issues in CE. So we are adding some workarounds in the triage ops to um, get data from the parent scope and put it in the, the, the triage package or triage report going forward. Uh, training for engineering managers for, and product managers to use priority and priority and severity label effectively. I haven't had time to do this yet, though um, Dalia and I were going to uh, collaborate. And Jason, if you're interested, I'm uh, happy to work with you too, because I think you've been uh, doing some trainings around prioritization features. This is specifically using the PNS labels for for to prioritize bugs for product management. Sure. Yeah, I think that that would be a really good thing to do, actually. Yep. And that's it for our uh, exit criteria. Anything else anybody wants to add? This is my first one. I just want to say thank you uh, for all the work that you've clearly already done <laughs> on this stuff. Um, this, this is awesome. Uh, let me know uh, what I can do to help as well, any more than. Um, you know, participating. Uh, if there's anything I can follow up on, just let me know. This is really good stuff. Awesome, thank you. So it's not just me. Christopher has been driving this 
like longer than I have been. So critical. I meant the the royal you. Yes. Uh, everybody on this call. <laughs> yes, there's Clement, there's Mark, there's uh, uh, Dahlia, and everybody else as well. So. I share my credit and take my blame individually. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's really Dahlia and Mac. <laughs> and then any problems, you can just come to me and talk about. <laughs> Uh, cool. Uh, Remy's here as well. A lot of work has been done by him, so I wanted to, to highlight that. Uh, with that, I'll end the call. I will post this on YouTube, and then uh, we'll see all of you next week. Thanks, Cool. Bye. Thank you. Bye.